three poisons that we have will create mental chaos, will create worries, anxiety, afflictions, and that will weaken our immune system because the body is affected very much by what we think. A happy state of mind can maintain a healthy body much longer. A person who worries a whole lot read a research paper that a person who goes through chronic worry can deplete their age by like 10 years. They can age very quickly. So the longer that we prolong that worry, anxiety, the faster we age because the body decays much faster and eventually it will lead to illness and death. Okay, so let's jump into what are the three poisons. Greed, anger, and delusion. Those are the three <coughs> poisons that ruin our environment. In the Western Pure Land, there are no these three poisons. That's why they can maintain the purity of their land. There's a difference between greed and craving. In a universal term, the three poisons are really craving, anger, and delusion. Craving is anything that you set your eyes on with the intention to possess it. That's craving. You look at somebody's beautiful watch and you pay attention to it. You, you switch your attention to that beautiful watch. It's already craving. It's very subtle. It had this very deep root in tying us to this word for the samsara. But for us, we cannot eliminate our craving because it's so deep that we can sometimes we don't even detect it. Sometimes we're not even aware that we crave certain things. But for us, we can detect our greed. And so we're going to focus more on that because it's something that we can, it's more practical, it's something we can deal with. So what is greed? Greed is to want to have more than what you need. For example, last time we talked about the principles of money, what the Buddha taught this layperson how to manage his wealth. With his income, the Buddha taught him five ways to maintain his wealth. One is to use his income for his family expenditures, foods, clothing, housing, and so forth. The second is to use that money and to invest in his own career or his business for more development. The third is to donate to the needy, and the fourth is to help Buddhism flourish, and the fifth is for emergency. So we should take our income and divide into those five parts. Not necessarily five equal parts because everybody's different. Some people's mortgage is like 50% or even 70% of their income, so you cannot divide your income into five different parts equally. But based on your the situation, you can manage and divide them fairly. Let's say that our monthly expenses are $6,000. When we have the thought of wanting to have $20,000 a month, then that's a sign of greed. Because we want to have more than what we need. That's a sign of greed. In what cases is wanting $20,000 a month not greed? What do you think? So I'm not saying that wanting $20,000 a month is greed, but in what cases is wanting $20,000 a month not greed? If your expenditures are $20,000 a month? Yeah, right. If, if you are, let's say you want to establish a non-profit organization to help people, and so you need $20,000 a month to operate it, to run it. And so by going out there, fundraising, seeking $20,000 a month, it's not greed because there's a good purpose behind it. But if you run that business for your own benefits, then that's greed. Right? People know that being greedy is not good. But yet, it does not stop people from wanting more, wanting more money, wanting more of everything. Why is that? Why do people want to have more? What do you think? Why do people want to have more money? We know that being greedy, people frown upon. But yet, it does not stop us from wanting more to have more money. And in fact, it feels natural to want to have more money. 
people feel more comfortable if they have more money. That's what they think. Well, because of security, right? People want to feel secure. And why do people feel insecure? Well, just like this world, where everything is governed by the laws of physics, this world is governed by the laws of impermanence. Things don't last. That's why we have this natural thinking to have more, and that naturally leads us to crave more. And then over a long time, it makes us greedy because we don't trust the world. We want to control it, and the more that we want to control it, we want to have more. But the law of impermanence is taking things away from us, and we try our best to fight it. Unlike the Western Pure Land, when you read in the sutra, the land is paved with gold. The buildings are made of seven kinds of jewelries, and so for them, those precious metals are normal. You don't see anybody in the Western Pure Land running outside, carve out a piece of gold, and run back and save it in the house because it's so mundane. But for us, gold is so precious. If somebody walks down the street and finds a roll of hundred-dollar bills, they'll probably want to keep it. But maybe they want to keep it for themselves, or they don't want to turn it over to authority because they don't trust the authority. Maybe the authority will take it for themselves. And so when we see precious metal, we see money. It's so valuable to us because those things to us are rare, and that's why it's so natural for people to be greedy in this world because those things are rare. And because things deplete, things wear out, things lose value, and that's why we have this tendency, this natural tendency, to want to have more and more. And so that's why it's so natural for people to be greedy in this world. It's so natural for this environment to be poisonous. But in the Western Pure Land, there's no greed because there are no conditions for greed to arise. And so that's why they can maintain a very pure environment. Wanting more is a sign of greed. And if you don't want more, let's say that you have enough and you just want your portion, that could also be a sign of greed too. Even if you just want what you deserve, what you have, that could be a sign of greed. Really, a sign of craving because you still have that desire, right? That. For example, you let's say you sit together eating dinner with your friends, and food is being served, and the waiter knows you very well. That waiter knows that you normally eat three bowls of rice, and that's just enough to fill your stomach, no more, no less. But that day, and after the server serves you three bowls of rice, there's only a small portion remaining, equivalent to a bowl of rice for three other people. But if you say this is my portion, this is what I deserve, and that's what's going to keep me happy and enough. Everybody else, I don't care about. <laughs> so that's a sign of greed if we only maintaining our own portion while other people don't have enough. So even though we are having what we deserve, if the environment calls for us to share and we don't share, that's a sign of greed. So we have to observe ourselves carefully. Do we want more than what we need? And even if we don't want more than what we need, do we share with other people when conditions call for? Greed will lead to anger and evilness. A father has passed away. He didn't write in any will specifically how he was going to divide his assets, but he did mention to his sons, to his two sons, that he wanted to. Divide his house equally to the two sons. So when he passed away, he didn't have any will, and so there were two sons living in the house. Younger son, the younger brother, eventually moved, got married, <coughs> moved out, and bought his own house. The older older brother staying back, living in the father's house. And after the father's death, the young brother told the big brother. That he wanted the big brother to sell the house so he get his fair share. <coughs> the big brother said, "But you already have your own house." The younger brother says, "That's correct, but I bought that house with my own money." 
that said that I could have half of this house. And so you will need to sell the house so I can get my half of the house. The bigger brother thought that his younger brother was being unreasonable for forcing him to move out to sell the house. But the young brother thought that he was right by asking for what he deserved because dad said so. In his mind, he deserved half the house. But to the big brother, the younger brother was being unreasonable. So when we have greed, we don't see our own fault. We will only see what we want to see. And so that's what greed is leading it to evilness because eventually the two brothers, they sue each other. Uh, they may even kill each other just to satisfy what they thought belonged to them. When we have greed blinding us, we can only see what we want to see. We don't see the brotherhood. We don't see the relationship, but we only see our own right to that possession. So greed is poison because it leads to anger. It leads to evilness. Greed can also make people deluded. There was this person going to this jewelry store. He looked around and all of a sudden, he started to smash the glass of the jewelry cases. And he started to grab as much jewelry as possible. And before he could make his way out the door, two big guards pinned him down and turned him over to the police. On the way to the police station, the police asked him in the car, say, man, what were you thinking? Didn't you see the cameras, the security cameras and the security guards right beside you? How dare you rob this jewelry store during broad daylight? Are you crazy? Didn't you see the danger? Didn't you see the, the two guards? And so the thief says, Officer, at that time, all I could see was the, the gold, <laughs> the jewelry. I didn't see anything else. Greed makes people deluded because it makes us to see what we want to see. What we can learn from this small story is that we don't see our own fault when we have that greed. We don't see that our actions may be wrong. We can only see what we want to see. Just like you go to a bar and you see this man drinking and he's starting to walk and he, it's like he's walking on a ship, right, waving back and forth. And you say, Mister, you've had one too many drinks. Looks like you're drunk. He said, I am not drunk, you're drunk, he's drunk, everybody's drunk. A, a drunk does not see that he's drunk. So how do we know that we're right? We know we are right when we can see our own faults. When we can recognize our own faults, then that's the sign that we are on the right track. But if we always see ourselves as being right, Everything we do is perfect, then be careful, we could be wrong. Only when we see our own faults, our own weaknesses, then we are on the right track. So take that with you. If you always see yourself being right, being perfect, then be careful, you could be on the wrong track. Greed makes people deluded. Let's say you're, you walk in a casino, and a person comes to you and says, you know, these two tables have been very lucky. Over the last few nights, five people have won $20,000 and $30,000. And these people are so lucky. These tables are really lucky. Maybe you want to try your luck, right? Maybe you want to stay around. In 15 minutes, they're going to start another round. And who knows, you could be the next winner of $30,000. And if we have that greed, when we see a big dollar sign, then we are being trapped. That greed will not allow us to see the danger of gambling. I mean, casinos have their own ways of enticing customers to stay. They all have their own tricks. But year after year, people go to the casinos thinking that they have the tricks. They have the sunglasses, they have the looks, they have, they have the skills, whatever it is that they feel something very confident about themselves that they can win the house. But if you look at it from a non-emotional standpoint, just pure mathematics, the house always wins. 
but it is because our emotions, our delusion, it makes us think that we can win. And the casinos will help you with that delusion by giving you different choices, different games. And so when you go to the casino, you think that I have my freedom to choose any game I want to play. And so that gives them a sense of confidence, an extra boot of confidence that they may win. But in fact, they're falling into the hands of the casino. So greed makes us more deluded and we cannot see the danger behind that bait. And so that's why it's poison, because it leads to harm. Any uncontrolled desires will eventually lead to you know, craving and, and greed. Any uncontrolled desires are signs of weaknesses. If we show our desires, we are exposing our weaknesses. That doesn't mean that we should conceal our weaknesses. We should confront our weaknesses and we should eliminate them. If you show your desire and people see your desires, then you are opening yourselves up to being tricked, to being fooled. We should watch how we behave because those weaknesses will turn to bad habits. What I mean by that is, let's say a person who likes to eat a lot, a person who consumes a whole lot, that's a sign of weakness that you cannot control your craving. If you have uncontrolled craving of eating, eventually it leads to diabetes and obesity and other problems. And just like in casino where you have greed, you show your desire for money that you can be tricked by the casinos. And some people think that they earn free points, free stays, but where do you think all those free states and all the beautiful lights come from. Money that players bring to the casino. When we show, expose our desires, our greed, we are exposing our weaknesses. But again, we should not conceal our weaknesses, we should face them and eliminate them. Right? If we have desires for money, we are, can easily be enticed by the risky stocks with high returns. But we don't see the risk behind it, we only see the big percent of return, 20%, 30%, and that makes it attractive. And we have read, we only focus on the 20, 30%, we don't read the fine print that no returns are guaranteed. We don't see that risk behind it, and that's why greed is poison.